exactly 20 minutes now after 9 a.m. And of course, for time for us to get into our moments in current affairs. The SABC News Desk is now catching some heat after incorrectly reporting that former Johannesburg Mayor Mpo Mwerane had passed away. Murane has been in hospital for more than a week after sustaining some serious injuries in a car accident. It was just a day ago that Murane's family had to deny similar rumors that he had died. At the time, the family insisted that he was on the road to recovery and he would be discharged soon, but say his condition is still critical. The news of Murane's so-called death, as reported by the public broadcaster, sparked a wave of reaction on social media, prompting the ANC and his family to clarify that he was very much still alive. The family said, First we must start the spelling of all the rumors that uh, the things that we were going out on social media, uh, media suggesting Mpo would have passed on. Mpo is still very much alive. We are standing with the family at this moment at the African National Congress. We are here at Mill Park Hospital to offer the kind of support. This is from uh, the ANC spokesperson Pule Mabe, who said to journalists outside the Mid- Mill Park Hospital where M- Muerane is being treated. Meanwhile, social media has been awash with reactions from many taking aim at the SABC for falsely reporting on the former mayor's passing. Muerane is currently the leader of the ANC caucus in the city of Johannesburg and heads the regional task team fundraiser. Muerane briefly served as mayor of Johannesburg, having been elected in the October 2021. However, it, was long, it wasn't long until the party ceded control of the metro in 2021 local government elections. His namesake, the DA, is Dr. Mpo Palatse, then it took over as mayor. He came into mayor's seat after the death of his predecessor, Jeff Mukabo, or Makubo, excuse me, succumbed to COVID-19 related implications while Jolly D. Matongo died in a car accident. A Mozambican truck driver who caused a horrific crash that uh, resulted in the death of 18 people in Makado's Dorp in Pumalanga has been sentenced to eight years imprisonment, five of which are suspended for four years. This, in effect, means that Sebastian Makakao will serve three years behind the bars. The Middleburg Regional Court sentenced Makakao after a lengthy trial in which the state called upon the expert testimonies of two crash investigators from the Road Traffic Management Corporation, the RTM Singh Amafuchan. The defense called on a mechanical engineer to give evidence in the defense of uh, the accused and the accident uh, occurred in July 2017 when the truck, excuse me, when the truck driven by Makakao uh, collided head-on with the two minibus taxis on the R541 just outside of Makado's door. The collision happened when the truck driver crossed the center line and crashed with the two minibus vehicles traveling in the opposite direction. 18 people were killed and 10 were seriously injured. Makakao, who sustained no injuries, was arrested on the scene and subsequently charged with culpable homicide. The RTMC uh, Corporal has issued a statement expressing its belief that a harsher sentence should have been imposed. The statement read in part, the RTMC would have liked to see a harsher sentence considering the number of people who died and were injured in the crash. It, however, welcomes the fact that the negligent driver would be spending time behind bars for failing to adhere to road rules. In another accident, of re- in another incident of reckless driving, a driver was arrested for being caught on camera driving recklessly and almost causing a collision. The video, which went viral on social media, shows a truck weaving its way through traffic at high speed and driving dangerously toward oncoming traffic. Mpumalanga MEC for Community Safety and Security and Liaison, Vusi Shongwe, said although the incident occurred in KZN's R34 Road and the truck has a Mpumalanga registration, Shongwe called for the driver's license to be withdrawn. He said such behavior should be condemned in the strongest possible terms and such drivers should not be allowed on any road as they endanger other people's lives as we continue. How has the DA re-
reacted to Stellenbosch University's urination scandal. Well, we've had officials from all corners of uh, South African institutions speak out against the shocking footage emerging from Stellenbosch University this week, but it took until midday on Tuesday for the DA to present its own opinion. The opposition party came under tremendous fire in the past 48 hours or so after their usually vociferous press releases failed to mention anything about the now infamous urination incident that took place over the weekend. Stelly student uh, Tiernis Dutoy peed on the belongings of a black student in an alleged racially motivated incident. Baba Alondwayana uh, has come forward as the victim claiming that his dignity and privacy had been violated. Stelly's student, uh, Dutoy, has since been suspended from the Stellenbosch University and may face a permanent expulsion. It is understood that criminal charges will not be pursued against the teenager, or at the time of this article anyway, uh, that, that is what we had been hearing. While the outcry intensified, the DA who had been passionate uh, defenders of Stelly's and use of Afrikaans uh, waited before going public with their message. The party will argue that they were simply trying to gather all the facts, but some critics are unconvinced. Wesley Fester says, On a normal day, the DA normally bombards the media with 5 to 10 press releases before 12 p.m., most of it critical of the ANC, EFF, and government. Want to guess how many press releases they issued today about urinating incident at Stellenbosch? Zero. Another one who is uh, Pumzile Van Dam says, Hey, Leon Schwieb, I know that Stellenbosch University is a deep passion of yours. You've accused it of being anti-Afrikaans and fought tirelessly for Afrikaans to be the language of instruction. Your prerogative, your silence on the incident of racism is loud. What say thee? Ooh, ooh, ooh. It fell to Leon Schreiber, the DA shadow minister and a member of the Stellenbosch University Council to break the party's perceived silence. He has uh, described the incident as humiliating for the victim and demanded swift conclusion to an ongoing investigation. He said, We welcome the investigation launched by the university. The incident captured on video is humiliating, hurtful and, and infringes upon the constitutionality enshrined right to dignity of the victim, Babalo Ndwayana. We urge the matter to be handled with the requisite speed demanded by the situation. We also encourage the university to proceed all necessary support to Babalo, Babalo uh, and Ryana. Uh, he did not ask for this to happen and he should not suffer the adverse consequences. This coming from the Democratic Alliance. 28 after 9 right now. A courier company driver who faked robberies is bust with police uniforms. Ha! The 39-year-old suspect was arrested in Protea Glen on Monday, said the police. Police pounced on the suspect at his property where a reportedly stolen iPhone was recovered together with 14 reflector jackets of the Johannesburg Metro Police Department. It's alleged the suspect used reflector jackets to pose as a police official and stopped people on the side of the road with the intention of robbing them. Further investigations revealed that the suspect, who is a driver at a courier company, is linked to 12 cases of robbery in which the same suspect is a victim after he was supposedly robbed at gunpoint of merchandise to be delivered. Hmm. The cases were postponed in Johannesburg and Ekuruleni, and the suspect is expected to appear in the court soon on charges of theft, perjury, and possession of police uniforms. Still at Stellenbosch University, new allegations of racism have surfaced at Stelly's. This time it's alleged that uh, racist remarks were made towards an Indian student at the Lord Dance on Thursday last week. According to reports, her request for an Indian song to be played was met with racially charged comments. Stellenbosch University said the university authorities were in discussion with people who were in attendance at the dance, faculty leadership and student representatives to determine what happened and get more information from the student's formal complaint. First year student Babalo Ndwayana um, was captured, or captured a video of Tien's uh, Dutoy urinating on his desk, books and laptop on Sunday night and uh, there have been calls for Detroit expulsion. Now, Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Higher Education, Science and Innovation also condemned the incident, adding that the university must conclude its investigation swiftly and make its findings public to reassure the country that uh, it strived for an inclusive student community. Former attorney 
Colin Botiki Rishampu, 48 years old, has been convicted of six counts of theft of more than one million rand by a specialized commercial crimes court after he pleaded guilty to all charges. Rishampu of Rishampu Attorneys was attorney was struck off the role as an attorney in Gauteng on the 7th of March in 2018 because of his unethical practices. Afterwards, he continued to default six different complainants between June and August 2018 in and around Pretoria by pretending to be a conveyancer and practicing attorney. According to the North Gauteng Regional Spokesperson for the Director of Public Prosecutions, she said the complainants would deposit money into Rishampu's account, hoping that he would assist them with their house purchases in terms of transfers and issues of title deeds. Mahanjana and Rinkamfu told the court that uh, he knew that no transfers were going to happen and no title deeds were to be issued by the deeds office. Head, uh, head of the Specialized Crime Unit uh, Advocate Marshal Mukhatle has welcomed the conviction of Rinkamfu from Mabupane north of Tswani. In celebrity news, Borang Mateba has left tongues wagging after she tweeted that South Africa's Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Natim Treta, was as useless as we uh, was useless and that we all hate you. Ouch. There has been outrage over the announcement by the Sports, Arts and Culture Ministry for the planning to spend 22 million rand on a statue dubbed flag project in these depressed economic times. The department this week made an announcement saying it would make a symbol of unity and national pride. The department also said the project would inspire social cohesion. Social media users did not hold back their disdain for the minister and made sure that they made their voices heard in comments section of Mateba's tweet. Another one said, instead of supporting our artists during the lockdown, they are wasting 22 million on a flag. Another one said this is probably a stunt to steal money from the government for themselves. Not all the 22 million will be going to this flag. Another one said don't fold queen. We are here for you and I brought you some drinks to enjoy the violence. <laughs> Artists were left high and dry with little to no support during the national work, nationwide work, a lockdown implemented by President Cyril Ramaphosa in March 2020 to contain the spread of, of COVID-19. Last year, an independent forensics investigation into the allegation of misappropriation of funds to help artists during lockdown revealed that some of the applicants received more money than they should have, while others were waiting for funds that never came. It later emerged that some of the funds had allegedly been misappropriated. The National Arts Council, NAC, then handed over the forensic matter to Minister Mtetwa. With a growing electricity crisis, racism, rampant unemployment and corruption in government, surely these funds could have been used for far better priorities. And finally, and further afield in this beautiful and sometimes troubled continent of Africa, the upcoming Kenyan general elections will be a fierce battle. Observers predicted the presidential contest would be a two-horse race between William Ruto and Raila Odinga. The Ozimio Launja coalition nominee Odinga had just lost an ally. On Monday, Kalonzo Musoyoka, who was Odinga's running mate in 2013 and 2017, accepted to run for president under the Waipa party banner, leaving Azimio La Umoja in coalition. On the same day, Odinga officially picked former minister Martha Karua to serve as his running mate. The Karua and Odinga ticket is backed as the Azimio La Umja coalition formed ahead of the August 9 election the coalition brings together. Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta, who's already subject to term limits, has chosen to side with his former rival, Raila Odinga. If Kalonzo Musioka's presidential bid is validated, we will be the latest in a contest already recording over 40 presidential aspirants. Over 7,000 candidates will vie in the August general elections. We are extraterrestrial. We are.